Okay, so I'm going to ask you to step out of your comfort zone a little bit as we continue with our work with Shakespeare. And I want you to focus in on, you know, the play you've chosen and the character you've chosen. And we're going to go outside of pure literary discussion and we're going to step into um, an electrical engineering concept known as Ohm's Law. And this is a, it's basically a formula that we use to calculate the current and its relationship to the voltage and the resistance that are found within a system. Now, that all sounds very complicated, but what I really want to get across to you is that no matter what profession you go into, no matter what you decide to study, it's easy at times to be stuck inside a very like functional look at your profession. Uh, and so, like particularly if you're doing, say, engineering, and get caught up in the idea that it's just a mathematical calculation. And so sometimes I think using outside ideas from other disciplines as a form of metaphor to help you understand or better understand a process that's going on can be helpful. And that's a long way to say that I want to use this idea of this, this principle that we find in uh, the study of electricity as a way to understand how and why characters do what they do or why outcomes turn out the way they do for certain characters in certain situations. So we'll start with this, this basic formula that says that there's a, a relationship that takes place between the current, the voltage, and the resistance of, uh, of the system. So along, another way of looking at that, if you want to uh, look at our graphic here, okay, you can think about the, the current as being um, the, the movement of a subject through the system. In this case, it's represented by our little green creature right here. Okay, The voltage that's applied to that idea or that subject um, is also going to be affected okay, by the resistance that's taking place in there. Okay, So um, in this little illustration, you see that the, the tighter the constriction, the area that the current um, has to go through, the more voltage, the more push that needs to take place to get it through that thing. Okay, So in terms of a metaphor, let's look at this in a different uh, light. Let's look at it in, time, in terms of like how it might relate to a story, okay, or an individual, all right? So I want you to picture a subject, a character, Titus Andronicus, okay, in his play, okay? So the current, in this case, would represent flow. It's the, the ease of movement of this subject, Titus Andronicus, as he is traveling, or she, or whoever your subject is, from point A within the system to point B in the system. So the ease of that flow, the ease of that movement, we can connect to our other two terms. So again, if we think of that subject, the individual, the main character in our story, the sub-character, whoever we're looking at, as they move from a point in their story to reach a goal, okay, that goal may be stated, it may be a dream, it may be a wish, it may be a hope, um, it may be something that other, even outside people are influencing. They have some sort of desire, motivation, um, energizing forces, even if those aren't internal. It could be an outside person that's encouraging them. But our voltage, the thing that is sparking us um, the, in motivating us or motivating this character are the forces that are compelling or driving the subject to go from point, point A to point B. Now, the, that voltage might include something um, uh, maybe it's a dream they're trying to get a, a hold of. Maybe it's something they're trying to avoid. Uh, it could be a character trying to avoid execution, uh, a character trying to avoid falling in love, a character trying to avoid dealing with conflict. Um, so it doesn't have to be necessarily power, uh, positive movement towards something. And then lastly, we'd look at the resistance. These are the forces, the obstacles, um, the conflicts, the um, the blockages, anything that affects the movement of the subject as it goes from point A to point B. So think of resistance as being uh, those things that get in the way of the character achieving it. Sometimes those things are natural elements like weather, uh, sometimes it could be an element like time, but sometimes it can be other characters. 
It can be actions taken by others um, to get in the way. So again, let's think of that as we have a character who has a goal, wants to move from point A in our story and travel to get to point B, all right? And they want to go along the path of whatever least resistance they can get to. What's the most direct route they can get there? Well, of course, to get there, they have to have motivation to move from their current status to a different status, all right? That would be the voltage. But along the way, they might encounter some sort of resistance, some kind of obstacle that gets in the way. So the ease of the flow is going to be directly related to how much motivation they have to achieve something and how much resistance they face in there. So it's a pretty simple formula to think about um, in terms of like character movement. And that's really what we're gonna be doing uh, over the next you know couple of days. So I'm gonna provide for you a form that looks like this. Um, this is something that you can either retype or you can uh, handwrite in. But in it, I want you to identify like your character um, and identify like the goal that they are trying to reach, okay? Um, and then we have some graphics to help you along. But the first step is to identify the terms, okay? The current, which is the, the flow of the movement, where they want to get to, what obstacles might be in the way, the resistance they're facing, and then what motivations um, they have. What, what is it that's powering them to reach that? Uh, are they seeking love? Are they seeking power? Are they seeking comfort, peace? What is it that's motivating them? And then what you're going to do is work out a rough uh, proof uh, in this area, explaining your thinking of how you see these three terms interacting with each other, and then drawing some kind of sort of conclusion uh, about it all. Um, and in the process, I'd like you to go back, relook at some of the key quotations that you have uh, found. Is there any evidence taking place that identifies things like um, the dream, the goal, the flow of the movement, uh, the motivation that they have, or anything that indicates something or someone blocking that path and in what way they're blocking that path. So I'm gonna take you through an example that I've done for the play Titus Andronicus. So you can see it here. Um, I've replaced the block with Titus Andronicus and his quest for a peaceful retirement. So remember Titus has gone from being a 10 year war veteran who's lost 21 of his 25 sons and is looking just for peace. He doesn't want to be emperor. He simply wants to enjoy what remains of his family and ride off into the sunset. So I'm going to identify that, um, that I, or if you want his current, as the movement of Titus Andronicus from his return from tenure Gothic War to a peaceful retirement. The voltage, the motivation he has is to find peace after a lifetime as a soldier. He doesn't want the action anymore. He's The deaths of the 21 sons have weighed heavily on him. Um, and he's getting older, okay? These are all motivations that he might have to see that this flow, this movement from where he is as decorated war hero to peaceful retired gen army general um, is what we're looking at. And then the resistance, of course, would be the obstacles, which include that he's a violent man. He's been making war. That's not easily, like, stopped. He also has a rigid sense of duty uh, to the Roman state. His military training demands discipline and respect from his soldiers and family. All of that gets in the way of his peace, as you see when he attacks his own family. Um, you also have other outside people and forces like the Gothic Queen Tamara and her promise to revenge the death of her son upon him. You have Aaron the Moor who's also in the mix. Um, and so you can see even the, the Emperor, the Saturninus, is working against him. And certainly what's done to his daughter Lavinia is also a resistance that's getting in the way of his peace. So what I'm doing in the final part of this segment, as you can see, is I'm taking those three elements, uh, the current, the voltage, and then the resistance, and I'm offering a discussion of how I see those things interacting with each other. You'll be given a copy of this, uh, this example that you can look at and work through, but the idea is that you take this with your play and with your character that you've chosen, and you see if you can work out some of your own proof for how Ohm's Law could be applied within that Shakespeare play. Right? And then lastly, but not leastly, be sure to include some sort of quotation or evidence 
Uh, in this case, I'm offering evidence of resistance. Um, and these are different things that characters have said or Titus has said himself um, that demonstrate the resistance that's taking place.